Hi and welcome to video number two introducing my minimalistic CPU here. Since the last episode I found a way to both simplify and enhance the I.O. capabilities of the design. So this video is to demonstrate what I call today the final state of the machine this uh, whole video series is concerned with. The point of this series is to explore the idea of a minimalistic CPU design. For me, that's a system having just the minimum hardware that sort of never stops being usable, that always allows for that next step, a bit like the early microcomputers. However, they were never meant to be minimalistic. Right from the start it was about maximizing performance, memory, speed and so on. Here, on the other hand, I ask myself, what is the simplest practical system that gets me from a few hundred logic gates to machine language to 32-bit multiplications and divisions, operating systems, floating point capability, basic interpreters, or who knows, one day even to internet access. Hang on, you might think, why are you raving about a crappy 8-bit CPU again? That's a toy, why bother? Well, to me this whole project feels a bit like hiking without GPS or like going out camping with a small tent. There are so many things to discover outside the comfort zone of a touchscreen. So if it all doesn't sound too weird, let's take a look at the system and boot it up. As you might have realized if you've watched my first video, I've chopped my DIY paper tape reader and all its circuitry. It really was a fun project, but to be honest, in the end, it was not flexible enough. It's just a lot of work to print out and cut all these programs on paper tape. And updates are a real pain. Anyway, if someone's interested, I might make a separate video about this at a later time. Just let me know in the comments. So let me just get rid of all this stuff. Instead, we have a real cassette interface now. That is, we can read and write data onto magnetic tape, like on the early micros. I'm using this Commodore dataset here and suddenly it becomes much more convenient to actually use this CPU. In a mini-series here on this channel I've already documented how this can be done without any additional components or modifications. I'll put the links in the description so you can go and check it out if you're interested. Now we start with a completely empty system that really can't do anything on its own. Down here you see eight yellow LEDs showing what's currently on the bus. And since the CPU is in a halt state, we can change that manually, like so. The red and the green LED bars show the content of the 16-bit program counter memory address. Let's toggle the bootstrap loader into memory now. It's only 10 bytes long and should be pretty quick. It starts at address 02, B0, as you can see here in the program counter. And let's input the data now. So let's 0, 1, deposit, 15, deposit, 0, deposit, 0, 2, deposit, 18, deposit, B2, deposit, 0, 2, deposit, 13, deposit, B0, deposit, 0 to deposit and let's go back to the start address. Now we should be ready to boot up the system. This little program we just entered enables the CPU to load the so-called absolute loader, which in turn loads the operating system from uh, tape here. That is really just a fancy name for a little memory monitor almost identical to Steve Wozniak's Wozmon he wrote for his famous Apple One. Let's not forget to connect uh, the data set here and start the system clock. We will see and hopefully hear 
the absolute loader being loaded and started by our bootstrap loader. Oh. And yeah, I think it just started. Now the absolute loader reads in and uh, yeah, starts the OS. Okay, that was the first part of the operating system. Second part. Third part. And that should be the last part. The operating system will be auto started. And there we are, we are in. Let's have a look at the memory content first. We can uh, examine certain memory locations by entering the start and the end address 027F. We can also run a program that starts at a certain address. Uh, for example, let's go to address 400 and, uh, and type run. And the program prints out a little help screen here. Starting from address 200, we have also access to the absolute loader again. Let's load some test software. So let's see what's on there. I think this is Pong again. Well, it's quite a long program. Takes a while to read in. Yeah, this should be it. I think Pong starts at uh, at address 1000. Let's try it out. And run it. And yeah, it's Pong again. This time read in from our magnetic tape. Starting at address 800, I have a little test program in memory that prints out all the characters. There you can see it, it's just a couple of bytes. Uh, let us save this little program onto, uh, onto tape now and load it back into memory. Jump to save subroutine. You have to specify how many bytes you wanna save. Let's save 15 bytes. And let's call it hello. And uh, of course we have to press record and play on our data set and hit the enter button. Okay, now let us clear the memory address starting uh, at 800. Okay, this should be it. Let's have a look. Program is gone now. All we really have to do is to uh, press the rewind button and use our absolute loader to load the program back into memory again. Let's try that. Let's press play. I think this is it. We can try to run the program again. And as you can see, we've put it back into memory. Let's take a look. There you can see our little program is back into memory. I think this is it for today. The following videos will dive a bit deeper into the design aspects of this CPU. I hope I got you interested in following along. Before I close here, let me make one point clear. I am doing this for fun and as a hobby. I have some technical background, but I am in no way a computer expert. If you think that something I do is really wrong or off, please let me know. The whole point of this series is about going out there and learning it by doing. I highly appreciate any constructive comments or shared ideas. So let us try to build more with less. Take care. Bye.